Sometimes we hear pieces that have no indication of what palo they are and it can get a little bit confusing, right? To know is it really flamenco or what palo is it and all that. In this video I'm going to talk about three points that we can use to figure out the palo, let's say. Or we can use these three points to change it into a palo. If it's not on a palo we can try to change it just for fun, really. Okay, starting with the first point, let's say, which is going to be the rhythm. It's very important before anything to figure out what rhythm it's on. Is it 3 over 4, 4 over 4, 6 over 8, or if it has the 12 beat compass of, of flamenco with the actual with the accents very clear, would be the first thing. The second thing would be the key, to know what key it's played on. Because as you know, some palos have um, certain keys that makes them what they are, really, traditionally speaking. So once you figure out the key, it's going to help you, let's say, get closer to figure out what palo it is, right? The third thing is going to be really the chords and the harmonies. So let's say if you take, if you notice that the piece is being played on C major or relative minor, so basically figuring out if it's being played on major chords or mostly minor chords doing cadence and things like that, okay? So now let's try to apply these three points into that piece that I just played in the intro, Amor Dulce Muerte. And we can see what we can get. Uh, since it's not any specific palo, I believe, it's not uh, indicated there. So we can let's see if we can do something to make it into a palo. Let's see which clo uh, closest palo we can get from it, let's say. Like I said, we can just start with the rhythm first. It's going like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is three over four, easy. Next we have the key itself, it's very also easy, which is the A minor. But he's not using the tonic, he's not going... He's not going on the major, he's no minor key, it's very important, okay? And then we see the chords themselves, which is going here, again, A minor. And then E minor. going again F and then going to B F so basically resolving on the E flat 9 this is very important is doing the cadence as you noticed now having all this information about the piece I would say under these circumstances I would choose bulerias because the rhythm is 3 over 4. If we double it, we will get 6 over 8, which is already 6s. You know, Buleria de Jerez, let's say, 6. And if we do like this, uh, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1. We get already this rhythm, right, of Bulerias. And then we have the key is A minor, so it's perfectly applicable on the... Here. And the harmony themselves can be also, like I said, cadence. Right? Now let's try to put this melody of Amor Dulce Muerte onto Bulerias and see how it's going to sound, or if it's going to work, really. Now don't laugh at me, I think I wanted to put myself into Vicente's position and see how he would approach this because it's his piece, really, and how it might sound, where he would start and all that. And knowing Vicente this much, I think he would start with... the He loves the rest stroke arpeggios on the right hand, and he loves specifically here. 
So I think if he wants to go for this harmonies and melody, it might sound something like this. I think something like that I would imagine. Now if you want to do something like that, uh, if you want to put a certain palo onto something that's not, uh, doesn't have a palo and you want to figure out what palo it could be or changing it, or composing in general really, I would recommend to capture the essence of the palo and all that, to try to sticking to the, traditionally speaking, to try to stick to the key that it was originally in. For example here on the on Amor Dulce Muerte, we chose Bulerias because it's also played Bulerias here, right? On the E flat 9, let's say. If you want to go for, let's say, Guajiras or something like that, to try to, like I said, capture the essence of the palo, the, the, the character of the palo, it's very, very, very important not to play just anything, just on the compass of the Guajiras, but doing completely something else, harmony, uh, harmonically, I mean, and all that. So it's really, really important. That's, I mean, I'm not saying not to be creative in that point, like I'm not uh, saying you should not be creative because I understand some people want to, to be a little bit more creative and add, like Vicente, for example, did the Soleil in his last album on the B minor, right? Something like that. And it's, it's really, really interesting there to do something like that. So I'm not saying that you should not do that, but if you want to do something traditionally, uh, something that tra traditional, I would say flamenco, and you want to capture the real essence of the palo and all that, I would recommend sticking to the, to the key, the original key. So as a result, I think that the Amor Dulce Muerte, let's say it's played on a flamenco guitar, it's played with the flamenco techniques, picado, pulgar, all that. And uh, we can say it's flamenco, but it's not traditional flamenco, really. So, since it doesn't belong to any certain palo, right? Which in this case, it would be considered as cancion. Nowadays, this is what they do, like if you compose a certain piece, and uh, like this one, it's just 3 over 4 and just some, a beautiful melody or, all, or whichever it is. You can just simply call it a cancion if it doesn't have the signature of a certain palo, right? Or it, if you just don't put it into any category or any palo there. You can just call it a cancion and that's all. I hope this uh, video was uh, helpful as always. And I tried to make it short this time. I hope it's uh, okay. Hopefully I'll see you next time in the next video as always. Cheers.